Hey guys, Red X Rain here again with a sort of a bonus featurette, I suppose, for um, my Let's Play of Gex Enter the Gecko, mostly for the PlayStation 1. I'll talk about that mostly in a little bit. Um, but I basically just wanted to kind of, there's lots of like little cool hidden stuff and glitches and codes and that sort of stuff, but I just wanted to, you know, make a little extra episode and just sort of devote it to that. Um, so the first secret, I suppose, is um, right up top here, um, where all the secret levels go. You can see there's like this uh, sort of archway rooftop kind of thing. Um, you can't spin the camera until you get sort of closer to the edge, so I'm trying to spin it, but you can hear the camera probably going a little bit crazy, but I don't want to fall off. There we go. So once you get to about this point, you can rotate the camera either left or right, and you see this piece of sort of digital graffiti, Rich Jesus 98 Faith, Hope, Unity. Um, the 98 I get because this game came out uh, in 1998. Rich Jesus, who that is, and I, I mean, I guess we know that he's all about faith, hope, and unity, but I'm not quite sure who he is. I tried looking it up on the internet, but um, pretty much all I got is how to find that, not who that person is. I'm going to hop into this Circuit Central level real quick. It's tail time. Okay, I'm back. So I sort of skipped through, uh, you know, just to kind of get to this point. So you can see up in that upper left-hand corner right there, there's one of those um, question mark boxes, um, which I don't think I mentioned at the time, but they kind of remind me of, uh, they remind me of the uh, item boxes in uh, Mario Kart, especially Mario Kart 64. Um... But basically, we need to get over to that area, and it's kind of tricky to get to, with good reason, for good reason. Let's see if I can, I'm not too good, honestly, at, uh, at these kinds of things, but since I've played through the game, oh, shoot, since I've played through the game, I've gotten a little bit better at them. Um, aiming that, cir uh, that sort of um, spinning platform isn't too hard in and of itself to that area. I'm trying to get over to that, dang it. Now I'm rushing it. I'm trying to get over to that area in the left, basically what you have to do is you have to tail bounce um, off of this little sort of hexagonal... Hexagon? I think so. Platform. Let's see. Oh, there you go. Yeah, while it's moving, so you can tail bounce up here. And then once you strike this, you get a message. Congratulations. Uh, enter this URL to access the Secret Gex webpage. Now that uh, webpage does not exist anymore, um, but if you went to it, it would give you a bunch of... Um, Basically, give you a bunch of um, not quite codes, um, but basically little little things you can do, like not passwords or anything, because there's a password screen. Oh gosh, why did I exit the level? I did totally did not need to do that. <laughs> I got distracted thinking about what word I wanted to use. Let's hop back in here. Um, but yeah, the PlayStation version of this game has um, little sort of cheats, I suppose, that you can Boys. enter. Tron didn't work once, it's not gonna work twice. And uh, to do all of them, uh, first you gotta highlight exit, and then you gotta press the L2 button. So if you press triangle, left, circle, up, and down, you gotta hear the sound there. The art of fighting without fighting Gexon. Uh, opens up the voice activation mode. So now you can press select anytime, and Gex will just say a random audio file. Just sort of say a random thing. Yeah, not necessarily level specific, it can be from anywhere. Um, kind of building on that, uh, I'm going to press L2, down, right, up, down, right, left, right, down, down. There we go. Uh, didn't quite work there. That's weird that we can even pull up, because uh, I'm still pressing select for voice activation. Note to self, don't drink tap water at Jerry Garcia's. You can kind of hear that S there at the end. Let's try again. I'll take new levels for 20, Alex. 20, Alex. There we go. So it's uh, sometimes called the rambling Gex code. Basically, it basically it makes him uh, sort of take like the last couple seconds of whatever he says and kind of stutters it and repeats it. Honestly, it's kind of an annoying little cheat, and I don't really care for it all that much. Um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press right triangle, right, left triangle, X. Kind of already heard the sound. I was... I did it before I typed it. Um, opens up a level timer. It's kind of cool. Uh, let's see, what else do we got? Okay, so go down to exit. Right, right, left, right, triangle, down and right. Did I do that right? I'm invincible. Yes, opens up the level select. Um, we can pretty much just warp to 
any level we want, whether or not we have the red remotes acquired to get there or or um, or otherwise. Um, let me go to what would be a good level to show this next thing off. Um, and this does include all like the secret levels and everything too. I'm gonna go ahead and go to one of the um, rocket channel levels because it'll probably be the best place to show off. The last oh, two uh, main cheats here. Um, so again, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pause the game. Hit exit. And I'm going to do up, up, down, right, triangle, and down. Come on. I missed it wrong. There we go. I think I hit up three times or something like that. So you can see I have 40 lives at this point. And if I go ahead and I... Just jump off the edge. Well, that's our infinite lives code. I'm a light bulb. And again, remember if you're looking to this for like a guide or some sort of thing for codes, make sure you're pressing L2 while you do all these codes. Uh, so left, right, triangle, down, right, and left. Get our confirmation sound. And this is kind of cool. This is why I picked this level. You'll notice that the um, air meter that's usually to the right in the space levels is gone. Try building a raft. Uh, and that's because uh, this is the um, invincibility code. So I'll just kind of show you. Even if I get hit by an enemy, it's nothing. Ooh, lightsaber battle. Um, nice timing there. Uh, so yeah, you can be invincible and you can have infinite lives. So that's pretty cool. Um, and I think that's about all I can show off here. Oops, I gotta not be moving to exit the level. Uh, yes. And uh, you can do these codes, um, you can enter them at pretty much any time, including on the media dimension. Um, doesn't, doesn't really matter, but I like to do this one in the uh, media, media dimension. Area so uh, L two left circle up down right right left triangle up down. There we go. Uh, it's gonna give us kind of like a master cheat. Uh, uh, kind of a debug menu is what they call it here. Um, so you can do stuff like uh, turn on these short stats, which I'm not quite sure what information they're telling me. Uh, maybe like a programmer or something like that knows exactly what these numbers mean, um, but clearly it's pulling data about. I don't know what's showing up on screen or something like that. You can also access the level select menu. This is the same level select menu that you can open up uh, independently. It's really no different at all. It's just a different way of getting to it, I suppose. But you can also mess with your collectibles. You can give yourself all the remotes. You can take all the remotes away. Um, you can uh, select a certain number of red, silver, gold remotes. Um, and you can do the same thing with collectibles. Obviously, that doesn't mean anything in the media dimension, but if you're in a level, you can keep manipulating that over and over again. Uh, and to make those uh, remote codes work, you have to actually put the remote cheat to yes instead of no. That's what that's all about. Like that. Um, uh, yeah, so I think that covers all of it. Uh, when you want to exit it, you just go up to the top and turn off the debug menu. You can do the same code again, and it'll uh, obviously open up again. So that's it for um, the PlayStation. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch systems. See you in a second. Ah, uh, yes, this is our welcome to Gex 64, which is the N64 port of um, the game that I've been playing. And because we have different developers and everything, well, Crystal Dynamics is still behind it, but uh, the opening is quite different. Midway Games um, published, and I think real-time distributed, the N64 port. It's tail time. Man, that is such a lame opening. Oh my gosh, compared to like when he says, coming through, and then Rez comes through, and we don't even get like that fly through the uh, opening of the game or anything like that. It's really rough. Um, probably the roughest thing is, unless you have a controller pack, you gotta use a password here. It's a password system. Yeah, totally sucks. And they're super long and um, needlessly uh, complicated. 
Um, I'm just going to enter this just to kind of, I don't know, to give myself time to talk, I suppose. Um, so yeah, I had mentioned, uh, gosh, I don't know, totally lost track of what episode number, but I remember I was talking a little bit about um, this N64 port, which again is called Gex 64. Um, yeah, uh, discs, um, like PlayStation discs, uh, could hold a lot more information than, and data and that sort of stuff than N64 cartridges, cartridges in general. So they really had to strip a lot of stuff down. There's a lot less voice files, so Gex repeats himself a ton in this game. Uh, or in this port of the game, I should say. Um, obviously little cutbacks that they could make, like, you know, not having, like, that, um, flying through that, you know, like when you first start the game and it, uh, says, like, start, load, like, passwords and options, that's not here. And probably most egregious of all, um, pretty much all of the secret levels and, um, bonus levels and that sort of stuff were cut from the game. There we go. So I just loaded up a... I had to play through the game a little bit to kind of unlock some stuff. Like, I un unlocked the white gate area here by playing through, um, I don't know, out of tune again. Um, so, I mean, it looks a little different. You might notice, like, the gates aren't colored quite as well. Um, when you walk up to gates, res doesn't say anything. It's uh, The fire looks pretty flat, that sort of stuff. Um, let's enter another password here. And basically the password that I'm entering now is kind of like the all-around, um, unlock everything password. There's a, couple, there's a couple of passwords that you can enter, uh, one for, like, just opening the red gate, one for opening the green gate, and I think there's maybe a couple of other little ones, um, but definitely not to the extent, um, like the debug menu that, uh, the PlayStation version um, has, but this is basically going to give me 99, uh, yeah, 99 lives, and it's going to give me all the red remotes, silver remotes, and, uh, golden remotes so that I can get to, um, the one, um, the one thing that was actually added to this version of the game, as opposed to subtracted, because again, um, yeah, about half the, uh, half of the bonus levels and all of the secret levels, um, except for one, which is, uh, unique to this game, um, were just stripped away here. Um, God, I hate these old password systems because they're... Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Um, gosh, what, what else was I going to say about this, uh, about this game? Oh, yeah, another thing is, uh, just in general, um, in addition to there being... Did I enter it wrong? Oh, no, there it goes. Okay, it's just kind of staled out on me. Um, yeah, so see, we have all the bonus, well, the bonus levels that this game does have, just a couple here, there's a couple hidden elsewhere. Um, yeah, the, the music is also pretty flat in this game, and actually sometimes if you're in a level long enough, the music will run out, like it doesn't cycle over again. I don't know if it'll happen... And it's, it seems somewhat random, and it's maybe level-specific. Some levels repeat better than others. I don't know why. But yeah, sometimes the music will just stop and not repeat itself. So going up to the same basic area where the other secret My levels are in the PlayStation version, we have this uh, Gex Cousteau titanic theme level. And, um, you know, again, just sort of speaking to the quality of this game, um, you can see, like, how out of place that, like, TV screen image really is. Um, and again, more little aesthetic differences here, like instead of having the red remotes along the side to select, I mean, you still collect red remotes, but they just have like a generic like X to kind of pick um, what objective you want to see. So yeah, I mean, the one cool thing about this, I like this pull the Z button. Who pulls the Z button? You push it. Um, that's the least of this port's worries. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of interesting. You know, it's an underwater level. Um, I don't know about you guys, uh, underwater levels tend to get a lot of hate, I think, in most games. Um, uh, but the controls aren't too bad. Um, basically, um, holding A allows Gex to swim forward. Pressing B, as I am here, is his tail swipe button in the, uh, in this version. 
Um, but of course, underwater, he can't tail swipe, so he does this kind of like torpedo move. It's his underwater attack, basically. And yeah, if you do, um, I made fun of it, but I didn't really talk about it, but maybe you read it. Um, basically, pressing Z does like a, a full halt, which, um, not much of an opportunity to see it here, but um, it'll come into play later. So that's the first objective, is to find these three arches that are just uh, sort of hidden in this... Not hidden, just sort of scattered throughout this first area of the level. Sort of comparable to the... Well, maybe not quite as bad as the uh, infamous Superman 64 where you gotta swim through... Uh, not swim through, fly through rings. But, uh... but kind of close. I wanted to be quiet there so you could hear, like, again, just like they had to really simplify the music in this game, and it sounds really... Not that there's anything wrong with arcade games. I love Not arcade games, tongue. but, like, the end of, you know, the level sort of jingle, it just sounds really... just corny to me. It's, it's, um... It just sounds too arcade-y. Arcadian. What's an Arcadian? Isn't that a play? I don't know what I'm, I'm... It sounds like an arcade game, and not in a... Not in a good way. Um, let's see. Uh, how, how did I end up going this way? I thought I was... Uh, that's the TV we just used to exit. Um, uh, must have gotten turned around. Um... Just for the sake of clarity, I mean, I'm just gonna kind of play through this to get all the red remotes. Um, I'm not gonna go for the collectible remote here. Um, I don't really need to collect it, first of all, um, so, I mean, I guess, yeah, it's the basic, I'm not, I'm not gonna go for the collectible remote. Um, okay, so to get the second remote here, we need to find these little turtle guys, these turtle taxis, which are adorable, but, oh, shoot, unlike that shark, which is not adorable, there we go, they can be a little tough, because, you know, underwater handling in video games. It can be very, very specific about when you're touching something, when you're not touching something. Just to kind of show it off, I mean, there's boxes and stuff to break if you want to go for the collectibles and that uh, reward remote. But yeah, you progress through uh, a lot of this level through these little... Not a lot of it. It's actually not a huge level, this section anyway. They call him flipper, um, flipper. Now, see, that makes sense in this context. That's in the first one. Well, not the first one. In the PlayStation version, too, but it makes a lot more sense in this level. I think it came up when I was playing, like, one of the Toon TV levels, and I'm like, eh, kind of out of place, I guess. I don't know. Um, okay, so this is basically this cave portion, which is where we're going to find our second red remote, is a uh, maze. Not terribly bad, I suppose. I mean, you can always use the old standby of, uh, you know, this this works for, like, real-world mazes, too. Like, um, uh, what do they call, uh, like, a corn, corn mazes, right? Um, is if you just stick to one side, keep your hand along one wall, um, and you follow it to the end or whatever, you're guaranteed to, um find your way out. You can do that same basic thing here. And actually, I probably should be doing that because I don't know where the hell I'm going. No, I know. Um, <laughs> basically, it's uh, it's to the left, to the right, and then two lefts. Sounds like a dance. To the left, to the right, let's do this dance. And I haven't watched that in a long time. <laughs> um, and so there you go. You just find the, um, the uh, yeah, the exit TV hidden uh, way in that maze. Oh, you know, I should have shown it. Ah, who cares? This is just the, uh, it's the extras, right? So, um, the hidden remote is also, uh, in that same area. It's in one of the little sort of, um, basically one of the alcoves you don't have to go in. So, um, it's like if you make a, a left, a left, and then a right, it's at the top of, of one of the sort of little chamber areas. <clears throat> All right, so for the last one here, uh, this is kind of interesting. This is um, a little bit frustrating. Oh yeah, you can you can pop the life preservers and you can go down and get the collectibles if you want. But basically, swimming up to the very very top here, um, we actually get into the Titanic. Um, interesting level. Um, 
overall, I wouldn't say that I necessarily miss it in the, um, in the PlayStation version. Um, this is a pretty f straightforward puzzle. Um, basically in the first room you just have to turn around and, and hit the power switch. Um, and then that powers on these, uh, sort of door switches. And you have to shut the one behind you before you can open up the one that's in front of you. Which I guess makes sense somehow with like ships and that sort of thing. Um, this one's kind of tricky because it only has a very small space to fit through. Just torpedo right through it. Um, you can keep hitting that switch as many times as you need. Um, and it'll just either, the, the, the gap will either come, like the door will rise up. Um, or lower, depending on, you know, what time it is that you hit it. Um, but, uh, you have infinite tries at that. This part's kind of annoying. Um, two ways to go about it. You can either, whoa, you can stick to the left here where it's dry and the water does not wash you away, and you can try and walk across that, um, wooden plank. Um, I can never really get it. Case in point. <laughs> uh, I can never really get it. The camera's too wonky. The, um, controls are not great. Uh, this is actually one platformer that I think is better with the um, D-pad on the PlayStation as opposed to the analog stick of the uh, N64, or even if you play it with a PlayStation 2 remote. I think the D-pad actually just works a lot better for this game. Why exactly? Maybe I'm just more used to it. Could just be personal preference. I don't know. Um, but yeah, once you get across here, there's... Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. Um, there's this area, which, uh, I know when I first played this, I was like, wait, am I in, like, an oversized bathroom? Um, it's good that they put a checkpoint here, because if you fall down there, it's, uh, instant death. It's highly unlikely that you would fall down that far, but, you know, you've made it this far, so I guess they figure, uh, let's give you a checkpoint. Um, but yeah, when I first played this level... Um, I was like, wait, am I in, like, an oversized bathroom? Because all this looks like faucets and, like, handles, and I'm not quite sure what I think this white grating is, but I, I don't know, like, shelving or something? But we're on the, we're on the Titanic, so it's sort of just standing upright. It, uh, becomes a little bit more obvious once you get to the top here. Oh, come on. Of course, you can't rotate the camera, which would be... Oh, I guess kind of nice here. Not not necessarily totally necessary, but... Uh, come on. Yeah, just a few simple jumps here, really. Nothing too bad. And here we are at the top of the Titanic. And we got the three red remotes for um, this uh, extra level. And so, yeah, basically they put this one level in just to kind of give N64 owners, um, people sort of reason to uh, to buy this port of the game. It's unique, yeah, um, it's kind of cool. Um, man, that picture of Gex like on top of the Titanic is just terrible. It doesn't look like any of the other t TV screens in the game. Uh, Rich Jiza apparently did not approve of this, <laughs> so his graffiti is not uh, in the N64 version. Um, so yeah, that about covers everything. Um, Hope you enjoyed this little bonus featurette. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this in a Let's Play. Um, if this is new and you're just uh, watching it, if you like this and you think that I should do this with all of my Let's Plays, when applicable, Welcome of course, the if there's this amount of stuff to show, let me know in the comments. So, uh, as always, uh, thanks for watching. Please like, please subscribe, and please comment. I do always appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, this officially wraps up uh, my Gex series. So I will see you guys next time with a brand new Let's Play. Bye.